Hey guys, welcome back out here to the shop today. We're going to be working on that Predator 4000 generator again. The other day I went ahead and got the carburetor put on and we were still having some fuel issues. The little peacock, uh, the quarter turn valve, it was really, really gummed up from where they, I don't know if they didn't leave the fuel shut off, but anyway, it was really gummed up and the other day I was able to crank it and give it a few pulls and it would start but it would not stay running so there's some kind of fuel issue going on and that's what I'm going to dive into today and try to figure out why we aren't getting fuel or what the issue is. So I'm going to start off at the ground zero point and try, just try to re-get this cranked and make sure that um, it, it'll still at least turn over. So I know nothing's locked up or anything like that, but I want to get it just cranked and then we'll move on from that point. So I've got the choke on, the fuel should be on. It'd be so much easier if this was electric start. All right, so we got it. So that it still will turn over, but for some reason it's not getting fuel to stay running. <clears throat> One of the things that can happen is it's worked off of a vacuum system. So I already went ahead on the last video and check to make sure that the return line into the tank was free and clear. That way it wasn't getting like vapor locked. So I went ahead and already checked on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I feel certain that this is supposed to have fuel in it instead of just barely having anything in there, but I could be wrong. So what I'm gonna do is separate the carburetor from this fuel system line by taking off the fuel line where it connects into the carburetor. Just see what kind of fuel flow I have out of that. If it's a good steady stream, then we know from this point back up to the tank is good. Then we can start looking at the carburetor. Just because it's a good car or a new carburetor does not mean that one of those jets might not be clogged. So if that's the issue, then we'll go there. So real quick before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect or take out that drain or the bottom uh, bottom bolt on the carburetor just to see if I have any fluid actually sitting down in there. So we'll turn the fuel off real quick. That way it doesn't continue to run. All right, so I got that bolt loosened up or the, uh, the bottom nut or bottom bolt, I should say. Seems like we got some decent flow. And I'm also now seeing that the flow switch is labeled backwards. So on the sticker up and down is off and then a horizontal is on but it's actually opposite of where it's supposed to be so i can see that we got well i thought we did what happened Alright, so that does cut the fuel off. So the fuel filter is filling up correct. We'll take this the rest of the way off real quick. And we'll turn this back on. I don't know if you can see it. Right here where my glove is, is it's just pouring out. So that is a good sign. It 
seems to be having enough fluid flow. So I just removed the needle out of the top of the carburetor to help with the idle. And one of the holes was plugged up. I don't know if this is the actual root cause of it, but we cleaned it out and you can see those itty bitty holes. I don't know if you can see them, how good that, see that there's one, two, three, and four. So you got four holes and one in the very bottom as well. And you wanna make sure that they are all cleaned out. So I got choke on again. It's almost acting like it's trying to build up fuel inside of it. So we're going to take out this other one and see if it's dirty. So this that I took out is just a needle to help with the throttle, with the idle. Nothing looks bad about that. All right, so I'm going through the carburetor and just pulling off all the jets, pickup tube, stuff like that. So right now I've gotten the pickup tube pulled out and it had some gunk in it, but not too bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it, get the screw put back in, and then make sure that all the other jets are already clean. So this I think is the last one that I needed to check. So we'll go ahead and put this back in. Maybe just put some washers on here just to lock that down, and then we'll try it again. So I'll put that piece back in. Get that put in. Somebody had asked me to make sure that I had the throttle linkage and everything hooked back up, and I do. That's all in one spot, all connected up. get our two nuts and put those back on to so the choke it's back on fuels on we got the carburetor reattached I never unattached any of the throttle linkages or anything like that so let's give it another tug That was a lot longer than before. So possibly the pickup tube, there's a moth in here trying to join the party. So I think that the pickup tube was not low enough. So let's go ahead and take the choke off. Try it again. Let's put it back on. All right, guys, we're back, and I found out what's going on. So after taking the carburetor completely apart, trying to diagnose everything, this is a brand new carburetor, came with all the gaskets. The other carburetor had nothing with it, no gaskets, was missing some of the needles, and so I kind of started with from scratch, Without knowing what I was actually working with, I cut that hole in that gasket. Watch this. Shh. 
shouldn't have cut that hole. So I'm on day two of the trying just to get this thing to run and stay running. So what we did last night is work with the carburetor a bit and I could not get it to stay running. I got it at one point where it was surging up and down really, really bad like it was hunting um, and it just wasn't good. So today I came back and I had a diagram of how the entire setup was supposed to be for the carburetor and there's supposed to be a gasket right here a gasket right here and then this black plate I hope you can see that right there one of the things that I had noticed last night is that there was a gasket against the black plate and then like a another rubber seal we had this little seal right here this is a metal piece with two rubber gaskets on it as well and Every time that I was messing with it, I couldn't get the engine to run correct. So what I did today was I completely removed it, installed just a gasket, and now it's, it's running. There's one issue still with it slightly surging, and any time that I come to the carburetor and I start covering up that little jetway, it uh, it seems to fairly idle itself out. So um, I'm still working with that, trying to figure out why this little port right here is causing an issue with the fuel flow. I went ahead and found a, another resource document that said I put the fuel mixture screw all the way in and then one and a half turns back out. So I did that and I think that it probably needs some more adjusting and that's what's causing issues also with that little jet. So we're almost there, we're trying to work on it. But as I was doing all that, and you can see I have the light in the background, it's actually plugged into the generator right now, it's not turning on. So I don't know what, what happened between the other day when it was turning on and all of a sudden now that I've got the engine running, it's not turning on. So I've got to work with that a little bit more. A few little bugs to, to work out, but we're going to go ahead and fire it up and see where we're at. One of the things I did keep reading about is that every time you have an engine that's not starting, it's the carburetor, it's the carburetor, it's the, it's the needles in there, it's the, the jets, stuff like that. This wasn't the case. This is a brand new carburetor. I've cleaned it twice now. I made sure that nothing was clogged in there. It's got a brand new fuel filter and I knew it was something else. And I was really looking at the gaskets being an issue and I believe that's what it's going to be. So turn it on, choke on. Okay, so one of the things I was thinking about, because I keep covering that little port just ever so slightly, and it keeps, um, even in its idle out. So what I ended up just now just thinking is that maybe it's because it's so open with the air, there's no air restriction. So I took the fuel or the air filter, just covered it slightly, and you could see that it evened itself out fairly well. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the air box right now put the fuel or the air cover and air filter back on and see where we're at that point. Then we'll probably have to work with the light.
So we got the generator running and it's running consistent. I've cranked it up and turned it on, let it run for quite a while. Got to change the oil in it. I don't want to run it too long with the old oil in there. And then we got to figure out why the light's not turning on. So we're going to have to check out the actual generator or the alternator part because it was running. And if you check out the last video, every time I cranked it, the light would turn on. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, now it's not. So, if you guys have any suggestions on why that would be, leave them down below before I start diving into that section of the generator. But, I'm glad that the running part is done. And, I mean, it was the gaskets. That's pretty much all it was. So, remember that the next time that you're working with something, make sure that all your gaskets are correct. Thanks guys for watching. Hope you guys got something out of this. And uh, if you guys are new, hit that subscribe button. And we'll uh, see you on the next video.